Disney Plus, one of the biggest launches of 2019. It's the beginning of the streaming wars, something that many analysts thought would happen five or eight years ago. But we have now on the scene Disney, we've got Netflix, we've got Hulu, and we've got more to come. And the streaming wars are super interesting from a consumer's perspective. Where am I gonna get my content and where can I find it? And how much is it gonna cost me? And what is my access like? But probably more importantly, what we're interested in here at Management Consulted is will this business model work? And why are they launching Disney Plus instead of just licensing the content out like they have for so many years? I'm Jenny Ray LaRue, the Managing Director of Management Consulted. We're a group of ex McKinsey, Bain, and BCG consultants who advise students that are interested in going into consulting on how businesses work and advise corporations on how to clarify communication and business strategy. We have a great business. We're based in Northern California, and our focus today is on looking at one of these really powerful businesses, Disney Plus. First of all, we have to understand what kind of business Disney is in. Second of all, we need to talk about what makes a business like that successful. Third of all, we need to make sure that we understand whether Disney is doing what will make it successful. And we're gonna focus today, not on Disney as a larger organization, but we're gonna focus on the Disney content pipeline. And then fourth, is there something that Disney should do to fix their business model? Number one. What kind of business is Disney in? But Disney is in a high fixed cost business. You could be in one of two types of fixed cost or a variable cost business. But every time you consume Disney content, somebody else could be consuming it for the same cost to Disney. There are very few distribution costs that are expensive now for Disney. It used to be that they had to create a DVD or create a video, but not anymore. For you to watch it and for somebody else to watch it, there's a single platform and you can access it. Now, the second point is what does it take to be successful in this? Well, because it's a high fixed cost business, you either need to charge a premium for your content because you can, uh, or you need a large number of users at a certain price point that will maximize utilization of that content. And because of the nature of streaming, it could be either one. Disney could have gone out to market with a super premium offering and they could have said, we're willing to take fewer subscribers. And that's actually what licensing content essentially was for a number of years. It was saying, we are willing to take a limited pool of dollars from bidders like Netflix or Hulu or other providers to provide our content on their platform. We're willing to take a limited amount and it's going to make it easier. We don't have to operate our own channel. It's going to be lower cost, um, but we're not trying to maximize the number of subscribers that have access. Disney Plus is actually a tweak of their business model inside what they're thinking. So they're not changing to be low cost and low volume. They're changing to be a high cost, high volume business, um, assuming that they're gonna break even sooner on new content that they're producing. What does this give them that they never had on Netflix? It gives them access to data to go create better and more content on their own platform, which before they never saw what people were watching and how long they were watching it for and how many seasons they were re-upping for. So they just got secondary information and it was never enough for a powerhouse like Disney. So number four, what will it take for Disney to really succeed on Disney Plus? First of all, they needed to launch early and they did a good job at that. In the streaming wars, the ones that are available first, provided they have a great content pipeline and good user experience, are going to naturally have more subscribers than some of the options that are likely to pump out content later. In addition, they've done a really good job by pricing low. They're getting a maximum number of subscribers interested, which provides them with more data for more nuanced content releases and better availability across the board. And in addition, they are already beginning to think about how they're going to adjust their content pipeline based on the information that they're getting from Disney Plus. So overall, we're bullish on Disney Plus. We think that it's a really great innovation inside the streaming wars. Uh, we know that not everybody is going to take advantage of it, but Disney has a really strong content pipeline that we think are going to drive a lot of users. 
to it. So only time will tell. There may be tweaks that they'll need to make to their strategy. But ultimately, at the launch, we think Disney Plus is a great idea that Disney understands its business and is doing what it takes to succeed in this model. Thanks for watching. This is Management Consulted, and you can find us on social. You can find us on YouTube, so subscribe to our channel, and you can also find us at managementconsulted.com.